Let's move on to start VTech next. Same thing. I will cover overview, use cases, details, and caveats, and hand, hand over to Justin for configuration, best practices, troubleshooting, and a demo of start VTech. You can start VTAP also enhances the campus VXLAN BMBT solution. So this is the start VTAP in the middle. This will provide overlay connectivity between the gateway clients on the left, so your clients connected to the APs, to the gateways, or even UBT clients on the wired switches to the gateways. And in future, the AOS 10 gateway will support static VXLAN to the start VTAP. On the right-hand side is the VPN network the dynamic tunnels from the access VTAPs to the start VTAP. So the start VTAP is in the middle of both networks. And this is supported on 6300, 6400, and A360. But in production, we recommend 6400 and A360 because of VSX and better scalability. In demo environment, you can actually use the 6300. The use case. So the start VTAP will actually terminate both static and EVPN tunnels, as you can see, the blue and the green. It will forward traffic between both networks. It can relay VXLAN GBP between both networks. And this will enable role-based policies between both the static and EVPN networks. This top VTAP will typically function as a layer 3 default gateway for your clients connected to the gateway. These clients will connect, terminate, and bridge to the, via the static tunnel to the start VTAP. So the gateway, the dot one, before gateway, will be on start VTAP. So for example, this is your subnet one, and the default gateway will be one dot one. If they want to route to these clients here, subnet two, subnet three, they will route through the L3 VNI towards the access VTAPs. But if you do want to do L2 between on a certain VLAN, that is also supported. So we recommend L3 whenever possible, L2 where you really must. Details. By default, split horizon is enabled. That prevents traffic. So any traffic that is learned, it's never sent back out via extend EVPN tunnels. So because if you do that, you create a loop. And by default, VXN assumes full mesh of tunnels. That's why you do not need tunnel to tunnel forwarding, because they have a direct tunnel between themselves. And, but now if you add a static tunnel like this to a stop, by default, traffic will not go through. Your tunnel, your traffic learned from a tunnel will never be sent out another tunnel. You do have a knob to change that, but it's only applicable for between the static and dynamic tunnels. Dynamic to dynamic cannot allow that change because we still require full mesh and turning it off will lead to loops. Between the dynamic static or static to dynamic, we have a knob under interface VXLAN. Inter, inter VXLAN bridging mode, set it to static EVPN to turn off split horizon behavior. And you do that from left to right, static to dynamic will be allowed traffic coming in, will be forwarded out. And even from right to left, if you come in from the dynamic, will be forwarded out to the static. <clears throat> and if you set static all, that is the, the use case if this start VTAP is connected to multiple AOS 10 gateways. That's when you want to have static and static. Otherwise, if it's just one gateway, that you should only use the static to EVPN. And if you do set this config on other switches here, then it doesn't make any impact because there's no static tunnels. You should only do this on the stop to allow traffic between the static and dynamic tunnels. This is why I shot capture of what it looks like, the relay between the different networks. So this is a top to bottom gateway to the stop to the access. You can see my VTAP, 0 0.2 to 0 0.1. That's the gateway destination stop. And in the inner, you can see the 201.100 to 200, 200. 201.100 is the roll ultrasound the bottom employee. And 300 policy ID is actually the ultrasound. So we're sending the source policy ID to the destination the egress VTAP. The start VTAP will receive it and forward the same information down to the access VTAP. So in the other direction, you can also see from the access to the stop to the gateway is the same, 0 0.3 to 0 0.1 as the VTAP IPs. And 200.200, .200, 
the source, there's the employee here, roll policy ID of 100. So that's sent from the excess 0 0.3 to 0 0.1 here. Caveats not supported. Multicast L2 and L3 between the static and EVPN networks on the stub is not supported today. Up suppression is also not supported. In order for up suppression to work, you need to be connect, you need to have those clients directly connected on the port, access ports on a switch. You can't have up requests through a static tunnel. You can't suppress it that way. Hand over to Justin next for configuration. Thanks, Daryl. Can you see my screen? Yes. Perfect, thank you. Okay, so for the stub VTAP, for the distributed layer three gateway configuration, I'll need to turn on GBP so the stub VTAP can relay the GBP tag across the uh, traffic flows. And then the other important command is to disable split horizon between the static EVPN tunnels. And we do that with this enter VXLAN bridging mode command, and we wanna use the static EVPN option which will uh, disable split horizon between the, the dynamic and static tunnels. So the other most important thing, uh, usually the sub VTAP will typically function as a, the default layer three gateway for the, the gateway clients on the gateway side. And so we need to make sure we have the SVIs uh, configured for that in the active gateway uh, IPs and Macs configured there. And we need to add in DHCP relay if it's required for the deployment. Some of the best practices, uh, it's important to remember, enable GBP, enable GBP so that the sub VTAP can relay the tag uh, between both sides, uh, especially you know, if we're mixing both static and EVPN tunnels, we wanna make sure the GBP tags can get uh, uh, across the different types of tunnels. We wanna disable split horizon only for the desired purpose. So don't use the static all option if the objective is to forward traffic if you actually want to forward traffic between EVPN and static VXLAN tunnels, because because the static all will disable split horizon uh, between the static VXLAN tunnels too. So we want to use the static EVPN option so that we uh, can forward the traffic between the EVPN dynamic tunnels and the static VXLAN tunnels. So if the stub VTAP is expected to forward traffic between multiple gateways, then static all should be used. Uh, but you know it's important to remember configure it according to the requirements of the deployment. Uh, for troubleshooting, troubleshooting flow, first things check underlay network for reachability and to make sure that the tunnels are up. Uh, next is to check that the split horizon is disabled between the static and EVPN tunnels. And then uh, finally check that the MAC and IP addresses are learned correctly at each VTAP. So the first thing you wanna do for the stub VTAP to correctly forward traffic between the static and EVPN tunnels is to make sure that the tunnel source destination IPs are correctly advertised in the under, underlay network. So use that, you check the routing table, uh, test pings using the loopback uh, source and destination IPs to make sure that the two VTEPs can talk to each other or the two uh, endpoints can talk to each other. And then uh, fix underlay connectivity issues if needed. If there's no underlay network issues, check the tunnels. So use the show interface VXLAN VTEPs command. Uh, you want to make sure all the tunnels are operational and you'll see, you know, the stub VTEP, you'll see tunnels that are static and tunnels that are dynamic from EVPN. If the tunnel's down, uh, make sure that the correct source and destination tunnel IPs are being used in the VXLAN configuration. If the EVPN tunnel's down, make sure that the correct EVPN con configs are being used so that the dynamic tunnels can come up. Next, you wanna check that split horizon is disabled or that is disabled between static and EVPN tunnels. So the VXLAN tunnels are up, uh, ensure that split horizon is disabled between the static and EVPN tunnels. That's using the inner VXLAN bridging mode command and the static EVPN option. And so you can ver verify that using the show interface VXLAN command and you'll see that we've added a new line here uh, for the inner VXLAN bridging mode. And you'll just wanna make sure that the static EVPN option is configured. You wanna check that MAC addresses and IP addresses are learned correctly at each VTAP. 
So on the stub VTAP, you'll do a show MAC address, make sure that you can see all the MAC addresses from both sides, uh, the gateway and the access VTAP side in the MAC address table. And then at each uh, endpoint, the gateway and the access switch, you'll want to do a show MAC address to make sure that you can see the MAC addresses learned from the stub VTAP at both ends. And for IP addresses, you can do a show ARP on both the stub VTAP on, on the stub VTAP and see that the uh, IP addresses have been learned through the tunnel. And you can also do that at the access. You can check the routes at the access side and see that the routes are being learned from the stub VTAP and that we have the correct MAC addresses and correct IP addresses being learned. Let's take a look at how this looks uh, on a switch. Go back to my environment here. We'll log into the stub VTAP. And then we'll do a show interface VXLAN. So we can see that our tunnels are up, that we have some that are EVPN, some that are static, and that our inner VXLAN bridging mode is configured for static, the static EVPN option. So split horizon is disabled between uh, static tunnels and dynamic tunnels. Uh, we can also do a show interface VXLAN VTAPs. And we can see all the tunnels are up and operational, that we have tunnels that are being learned from the gateway that are static, and then tunnels that are being learned from the access side that are dynamic. And we can do show MAC addresses on here. We can see all the MACs that are being learned uh, from my Ixia traffic here, my Ixia client. Uh, those are all Ixia clients, uh, the user roles, being or user role clients that are being learned from Ixia that they're all showing up on the stub VTAP. And then we can do the same on the gateway. Uh, we can do a show interface VXLAN. See that we have two static tunnels set up. We do a show VXLAN VTAP, same thing. Tunnels are operational, that these are both static. And then we can also do that on the uh, access side. Show that we have them configured. And then we have them operational. The EVPN tunnels are operational. So these are all tunnels coming from the stub, uh, from stub to access. These are tunnels that are from stub to gateway. That those are up. Uh, we can also do a show MAC address table and see that we have all the MAC addresses being learned through the VXLAN tunnels at both the gateway side and the access side that we can see different MAC addresses coming off the switches uh, through the VXLAN tunnel. And then finally, if we wanted to do a show IP route on the stub, we can do that and we can see that all our endpoints, our loopback addresses, uh, especially from the access side are being learned on here and that we can see our, our SVIs are in the routing. So we have all the appropriate routes configured and that everything is working appropriately. <laughs>